Rich Homie Quan and Young Thug had a pretty short run together. But despite their run being so short, they will go down in history as one of the best rap duos to ever exist. It all started back in 2013 when Birdman launched his Rich Gang label with Young Thug, Rich Homie, and others. Young Thug was previously signed under 1017 by Gucci Mane, but when Gucci went to jail, he released his artist, which led to Thug signing with Birdman. Thug already had some buzz with a few hits under his belt, like Stoner and again with Gucci. Rich Homie Quan was an independent artist at the time, but he also had some hits of his own, like Type of Way, I Know, with Gotti, and Walkthrough. So they already were booming in the industry on their own. But when the two came together on Lifestyle, they took over the summer of 2014. This song was the ultimate summer vibe. It showcased two stars enjoying a hot summer in the hood with foreign cars, cash, women, and just overall good energy. And it's actually kind of wild how this song came about. Birdman was originally just recording this with Thug, but he had a sudden change of mind and asked Quan if he could record a verse. Quan finished his verse in 20 minutes, and little did he know that short 20 minutes was going to change his life completely. This was the start of something big for the two. In 2014, the group released the tour part one, which had more hit songs featuring the two Atlanta artists, and they were on a pretty good run. Some fans even labeled them as a new dynamic duo, but the following year, their close friendship changed for the worse. It all started in February 2015, when Rich Homie decided he wanted to separate himself from Rich Gang and focus on his solo career. But I have been focusing more on myself. I've stuck away from the Rich Gang a little bit just to get back to corn. Yeah. People want corn back then. But Thug wasn't too fond of Quan's decision. At his following show, he went on stage and took shots at Quan. You saw the video of me? The stupid thing that is really. That bitch on the corn. But when Rich Homie saw this, he reacted like nobody would expect. He showed Thug love. What happened with Young Thug? What's the story there? You guys are friends and then the whole thing fell apart there? Where are you uh, guys now on this? Uh, me and Young Thug, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know, like we can't, yeah, you know, he, he, he always my brother for life, man. You know, no hard feelings, you know what I mean? We, uh, we, we, we both went to middle school together. We live in Atlanta. Right now, it's just a lot going on. You know, I'm still the same coin, man. I've never said anything to uh, trash thug or banish his name, because that's not where I come from. I'm all about giving, you know, blessings. So, you know what I mean? I wish thug the best of success, man. Well, see, that's very positive, and, and I guess I'm going to be the instigator here. Yes, but you when you read that he says, I mean, you guys were brothers, and he calls yeah. you Tommy Kwan, yes. your reaction when that gets back no, to yeah. you is what? Look, my, my, my first reaction was my brother called me and I, I, I took my glasses off. Like, could it be honest? Not to get in my feelings. It hurt. You know what I'm saying? Not, not hurt in as in, oh, I'm gonna cry like, dog, oh, bro. <clears throat> I would never disrespect you, uh, point blank, period. Especially when, when we have each other's number. You know what I'm saying? And like, it's certain stuff you do and certain stuff you don't do. And it's a certain, it's, it's a certain way you do things. And that's not one of the ways I would have done it. And when he was asked about Thug's latest release at the time, The Barter Six, he showed love again. Let me ask you this, what you think about The Barter Six? Uh, I haven't done, I haven't listened to it. You haven't listened to it yet? Uh, I, I haven't either, but you know. Pretty sure Thug went hard though. What is my thing? I, I said, I'm pretty sure it went hard though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I bet it's hard. Yeah, yeah. Of course, so that's what's up. When's the last time you talked to Thug? Uh, I talked to him in a minute. Still my brother though, you know. Still your boy, of course, yeah, of course, you know. Yeah. No love lost like that, right? Love, you know, you doing it solo with the career, I'm doing mine. Wishing the best, see each other at the top. But in December of the same year, Quan got super drunk before he went on stage and said some crazy things about Thug. Get your ass back, bro. I'm like, girl, get your ass the fuck. Thug responded with a series of tweets saying things like, your career is almost over, and claiming that Quan really didn't mean to say that. And he even came back with an interview further explaining things. What, what was your take? What, what went wrong, in your opinion, with that whole movement? With Bird and Wayne or me and Quan? You and Quan. Uh, nothing. Not just the fact that he said he wanted to, to chill for a minute and mm -hmm. do his own music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did an interview and he was like, uh, I want to I wanna relax from Rich Gang and, and by itself, you know, I think the people want to hear me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, right. so we just stopped working like that. Mm -hmm. We still got music, but we don't really, we don't really work like that. Y'all don't work, at, uh, so is it on and off in terms of y'all friendship or is it just off? Nah, it's just, a, it's a pause. We yeah. ain't really saying how to act, but we don't really have no problem with each other. Okay. You know, at least on my end, I don't know about his end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you might need to ask him. 
But Rich Homie doubled down on his decision to do his own thing. You feel me? I, I came in, Rich Homie come on, and that's the way I wanted to leave, man. Despite how much good music we did or all that, you know what I mean? I still want to just always do my own thing, you know what I mean? I just didn't never want nobody to feel as if, like, to say, yeah, well, you know, I, I, I did this for Corn and, uh, you know, Corn the reason, nah. I want to always just be like, yeah, man, I did this because I wanted to do it. You feel me? Nah, but they even, like, go back to the Rich game. That was a fun time in my life. Like, we made some great music. You know what I mean? Even now, like, man, I don't got no bad blood with thought, no, no bird. You know what I mean? I think we're all in a great place in our life, man, and that's what it's about. You know what I mean? At any time, man, we can press play on and do more music. But we were never a group, though. Quan's career kind of took a hiatus after he ran into some legal issues with his former label, T.I.G. This legal battle kept him from dropping music for nearly two years. This led to a lot of people forgetting about Quan while Thug continued to drop and gain popularity. But when he settled a lawsuit and came back in 2017 with Back to the Basics, it did pretty well. This year was looking pretty good for Thug and Quan fans. Quan even hinted towards a reunion. So Rich Gang was like super popular. Everybody thought you and Young Thug was a great musical duo. But like publicly, it seemed you and him had have like a weird relationship where sometimes it seems like you're hella cool and then sometimes it seems like y'all ain't with each other like what is your relationship as far as do you like it's what just, is it explain I'm saying, that like, we don't got no bad blood but we don't talk we don't talk every day like you'll think we talk every day but we don't got no bad blood so i just leave it you know it is what it is you feel me? i wish them the best you know what I mean? But sadly, it never happened. And just when things started to go into the right direction for Quan, he faced one of his biggest feats in his career. On May 27, 2017, he was pulled over at a police checkpoint and arrested in Georgia on major weapons and drug charges that had him facing 30 years in prison. He eventually beat the charges, but he just wasn't the same. Quan only released six projects between the years of 2017 and 2022. Now, this may not seem crazy, but if you really look back at his entire discography, he released over 20 projects just within the short two years of 2013 and 2015. 15. So it was apparent that he slowed down drastically. He came out later and said that after the whole TIG legal situation and not dropping any music for so long, he fell into a depression and started drugs. But now, man, Fly ain't talking because of the litigation, man. Fly not talking at all. You know what I'm saying? I can't drop no music. My show money down. Um, man, I got a dark cloud over my head. I probably was the lowest I was in my life because you got to think, man, I went from here to here fast. What, was, it, was it drugs involved? Oh, hell yeah, man, I was on Molly every day. Oof. But listen, geeked up, fight down. <laughs> listen, I'm talking, bro, I felt like I, I couldn't do a show or a song without being on Molly. When did that start? Before some type of way, we was doing so many shows, I couldn't stay up. Mm. So I knew some people like, bro, I got something to keep you up. And motherfucker kept me up. But Thug, on the other hand, was striving in the industry over these few years. He stayed under Birdman's wing for a while and released great projects like Slime Season 1, 2, and 3. But in late 2016, he announced he was starting his own record label called YSL. And the following year was even bigger for Thug. He did many collabs with Drake, Future, and even Ariana Grande. But his biggest hit of the year was with Camila Cabello on Havana, which amassed over 3 billion views and landed him his first number one on the Billboard charts. As Thug continued to strive in the game, he later improved his label YSL signing artists like Gunna, Lil' Key, Lil' Got It, and many more. And by 2019, Thug was running an empire. Gunna and Key were popping. He just released his first official studio album, and it even ended up going platinum. After all these years of witnessing Thug's success and mindset change, fans started to question if he would ever get back cool with Rich Homie. But he immediately shut this down in an interview with Big Boy TV. What, what's the relationship with uh with Quan, with Rich Homie? No, we don't have no problem. Like, I don't think we can be like how we used to be. Right. He already just did some bullshit. He already know my heart, so it's like, I'm too pure. So once you just, yeah, you do that, it's like, no. And you know how people want more music, and we, people want to put y'all together. You don't see that happen. No. Right. Because it'll be just It's more personal simple. as opposed to? Yeah, it's nothing about music. It's 100% personal. Like, he, wow. he did He did a show before, and, he, and, and I think a guy had touched his leg on the stage like a fan was like, yo. He was like, yo, I ain't with that I ain't with that thug shit. And it's just like, man, you my brother. Like, like I got your name tattooed on me. Mm -hmm. like, what the f is you doing? So it's just like, it's like that. Like, I forgive him because I know he he really get he really be drunk to the point where I have to carry him out the club. Like, mm. so I know for a fact he was drunk. But it's like, and then 2020 on the Big Facts podcast, Quan said he just wants to have a conversation with Young Thug. And and just as a fan, I I just gotta throw it out there with you and Young Thug when we see. One song, or one song reunion, maybe. Bro, I don't know, bro. If you had one thing to say to Slime, like as your boy, your yeah. brother, how y'all were locked in, what you tell him uh, on the phone, y'all? Right now? Yeah. Shit. 
bro, let's just pull up on me, let's just chop it up. You feel me? Like, before we even get to songs and exactly. I want to just see what bro mind mentally, like, yeah. because, like, to this day, we still ain't just had no conversation. It was more like people around us talking opposed to me and bro just sitting there having that conversation. And after Thug's current legal situation and the possibility of not seeing him for a long time, the questions about their relationship started back up. Like how DJ Academics brought up how we never got an official explanation from either of the two as to why they actually split up. And Quan just said, sometimes the best answer is no answer. You and Thug was rocking for a while. <laughs> that I don't know what happened there. We always wanted to hear the answer. Okay. Never got it. Sometimes the best answer is no answer. Adam22 also asked him about how they fell out. And Quan kind of went into detail, saying how ego played a big part. And so would you say that during that time period, you and Thug were really like close friends? Not that was my dog. I wouldn't have met Bird if it wasn't for Thug. And so when did that fall apart? Um, you know, we you know, we all got our own side. Just start falling apart. I feel like when we start going on, we start getting booked for shows and shit. And ego played a big role in it. Certain people felt like they should go last, or certain people wanted more money, and mm. you know, one of those. You know, I ain't gonna say too much, but right. it started falling apart around it. And Quan's response when he was asked if he ever missed Thug after he went on his crazy run was pretty wholesome too. Yeah. Did you ever miss Thug while he was on that run without you? Um, Slime listen, went on a mean run. Now. Listen, a fool one. Yeah, miss him. Miss is a mean word though. Listen, miss is a strong word. Uh. I'd be lying to say, cause I was gonna try to put her a different way, but like I missed them vibes in the old. Like, I can't, I can't lie and deny it. I'm, I'm like the vibe, like uncomparable. It's good to hear you say that you missed them, them, them times in the yo, cause creatively, y'all was smashing. Shit, bro. It was hard. It was like, it was hard. Like I can't put my finger on it, man. That shit was just, it was a time to be alive, bro. These interviews really gave fans hope. With the level of maturity these two gained over the years, we just knew we would get a reunion if Thug got out. But our dreams came to an end on September 5th, 2024. Early this morning, Rich Homie Kwan completely shocked the media with news of his passing. From leaving his girlfriend and kids behind to Young Thug barely being able to hide his emotions during his court day following the news, everything about this situation was just heartbreaking. Let's just be sure to keep his family in our prayers. If you are a fan of Rich Homie Kwan, comment your favorite song by him and give this video a like before you go.